Happy Friday, everybody. Um, Will I am the Bowtie Sober Guy here with you uh, Friday night. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to share uh, the next letter in our acrostic, um, which is O. Um, so uh, glad you could uh, glad you could join me. Um, and I apologize. I still am fighting this um, stupid little cold, so I don't know what the, that's about, but uh, that's okay. Um, I'll uh, I'll get through it all. But uh, welcome, welcome to. Uh, Tonight's edition um, of Bowtie Living, and I'm going to be going over the letter O, um, which, uh, as I had mentioned, stands for openness. Um, so glad you're here. But before we jump into that, I just wanted to uh, wish everybody um, a happy Friday and, and hope that you had a great day and everybody's uh, recovering from the holiday um, and uh, doing uh, the things that they, get, they uh, need to get done. So... Um, I wanted to uh, to share just a little bit too about one of the things that I'm, I'm kind of one of the goals that I have in doing this is just sharing some things with everybody on and really the the journey that I've been on, but also how you might be able to use that in your own journey and and really about um, creating the life um, that you you really want, um, not just the life that's been handed to you necessarily, but um, you know like I said, it's all about um, transforming life's knots into uh, bow tie living so um, glad you're here um, I did have as I shared I had a couple quotes for you guys last night before we get started I want to read a couple of these for you um, again tonight and they, they actually go to openness so um, these are both from unknown authors I, I tried to find the authors of them or who said them originally and I could not find anything so um, they're going down as unknown um, but the first one is don't let small minds convince you that your dreams are too big. How many times have we had that happen to us? Um, where um, someone else's thoughts or ideas about what our dreams are um, shadow what uh, we truly want to accomplish. Um, and the second one really goes to what we're going to talk about tonight and what we talked about yesterday as far as um, our beliefs and our limiting beliefs. Um, and that is nothing holds you back more than your own insecurities. And I would, I would um, even take out the word insecurity and put beliefs in there. Nothing holds you back more than your own limiting beliefs. And so think about those as we go through this tonight, as we look at openness. And, um, you know, we can see, because again, we looked at beliefs yesterday, and what are your beliefs? Are, are they limiting beliefs? Are they empowering beliefs? The differences? Um, some, we talked about some examples. And um, if you had some time, maybe you uh, spent some time and um, looked at what you might have um, yourself. But... Um, without further ado, as they say, I'm going to jump in and, and talk to you about what openness really means. And when I talk about openness, it really means, um, are you opening to making changes? Um, do you want to grow? Do you want to transform, um, those life, not, life's knots or, um, do you want to untangle them, um, and, and design them into something else? And, and to do that, we've got to be open. We've got to be open to, um, new things, new experiences, new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things, um, and all of that. So it's really about being open um, to what is possible. And I, I, we talked about that last night as far as possibilities and what are the possibilities. Um, but if you, if you did any of the homework or thought about any of the things that we talked about last night, did you come up with any things that um, might be these life's knots that are really keeping you from achieving the things that you want to achieve? Um, if you didn't have a chance to, no big deal, but um, I would encourage you uh, to spend some time. Um, think about that. Are there things that you um, maybe think are holding you back from letting you experience um, what that is and really having the life um, that you want? And... Um, you know, one of the things um, about that is, um, we talked a little bit about this yesterday with the beliefs, but also other people's beliefs about you. Um, whether they're true or not, we still have those beliefs internally. And, um, you know, what is it that um, is keeping you from really achieving the life that you um, had hoped you always had? And maybe you already have it. And if you do, that's awesome. And I'm so excited and happy for you. Um so I did have a list of some things um, that I thought would be helpful um, for those of you that um, maybe um, needed some help on kind of figuring out, well, what are some of the things that might be holding me back 
Um, and so I just wanted to read a few of those t um, to you here. Um, anger, um, anxiety or worry. Um, I know that um, that was a big thing that I had to deal with a lot. Um, was just a high level of anxiety. Um, maybe simple things just like your physical appearance. Um, overweight, underweight, old, young, whatever it might be. Um, I remember when I was real young, um, that was a big issue for me because I looked really, really young. Even um, for as I got a little bit older, I still looked really, really young. And that was always something that I kind of held with me. Um, people pleasing. Um, do you live life people pleasing or codependency? That word gets thrown around a lot. Um, some people like it, some people don't. Um, but really it comes down to um, are you in the habit of pleasing others um, really um, and not um, taking care of yourself? Um, control. Um, are you discouraged? Um, anybody have a dysfunctional family? Um, you know, there's a lot of that in our world today. Um, jealousy, fear, compulsive behaviors. As I've shared, you know, I, um, I'm an alcoholic and I had a real issue with alcohol and I'm celebrating over two years of sobriety and um, although I call myself an alcoholic, that was what I used. I used alcohol to deal with all these other things that I may talk about here or listed and, and, and others. Um, and that was really what I used as, as a coping mechanism. Um, and it did become a very um, strong coping mechanism for me. Um, what are some of the other ones? Greed, envy, um, guilt or shame. Man, guilt or shame are powerful. Um, were you hurt? Um, were you hurt by family members, by um, anyone? Um, that could be physically hurt, emotionally hurt. Um, it doesn't matter. Do you um, lack self-control? How about procrastination? I know that's something that I have to watch myself, um, is trying to put stuff off, put stuff off, put stuff off. Um, loneliness, low self-esteem, perfectionism, um, sadness. Um, just living in sadness, and I, I, that was part of my story as well. Um, unforgiveness, um, workaholic, workaholic, are you a workaholic? Do you bury yourself in your work and define yourself by the work that you do? Um, and to some extent, that's not a bad thing because we all have to make a living, um, but do you use that as a way to define who you are and to really keep you from maybe achieving the things that you want to achieve? Um, and as I said last night, one of the big ones for me is um, worthiness. Um, do you feel worthy? Do you feel unworthy? Um, do you lack purpose? Um, how about chaos or conflict? Um, do you use that in your, in your life? And do you um, create that just out of the, the fact that you love to live in that chaos, um, that you love to live in conflict? That's where you feel comfortable. Again, those are just some examples of some things, and, and I'm sure you have others. Um, but uh, I encourage you again just to, to go through the exercise and think about that. What are the, what are the limiting beliefs that I have about myself, but also what, what are the empowering beliefs that I have? Which then, now that we have an understanding of what those are, we can look at this openness, um, again, which is the second letter in bow tie, um, in bow tie living. And what is that openness? And we, we have to ask ourselves a lot of these questions, right? Um, number one, do we recognize these um, or any of these? And do we recognize them as limiting us? Do we recognize them as coming in between us achieving um, what we'd like to achieve, what we would like to get, what we'd like to do um, with our lives? And um, if they are, then they're going to be limiting. And um, we want to look at ones that are really fulfilling and move us forward rather than those limiting beliefs. Um, but here's a big, big question. I know I referenced this a little bit br briefly last night, um, but do you have a desire to change them? That's an interesting question. Do I have a desire to change those limiting beliefs? You know, there's some things that, um, you know, being a workaholic, so a lot of people will say, well, that's a good thing. You know, I really give myself to my job. I really um, give my, my company everything that I have. And, and yeah, that's true and that's great. And I'm sure that they, they appreciate that. But again, is that something that you want to change? And I'm not saying not to become a workaholic. What I'm saying is, is there a way for you to change that? Still give um, that amount of effort, that amount of value to the company or whatever it might be, um, but also not have it overtake you. Um, and do you think that you want to change that? And really spend some time thinking about that question. 
Um, because there are things that you'll come across that you're like, well, but this is really, you know, um, did me well. Perfectionism. Um, I know a lot of people that struggle with that. They want everything to be just right. And, um, you know, it's not a bad thing, but again, if it, if it takes control, I have a funny thing that I tell people um, about myself in OCD, which is, you know, a level of, of perfectionism, right? Is I always joke that I have the perfect level of OCD. And they're like, well, what's the perfect level of OCD? Well, it, it keeps me organized, which is good, but it doesn't make me crazy, which is also really good. Um, because, you know, there are people that are, you know, have, have very severe levels of OCD that um, really struggle with just everyday living. Um, but that's a, that's a good example of, you know, is that something that I want to give up? Or can I utilize it in my life going forward in a way that's productive and empowering and not limiting? Because you could definitely see how OCD would be both. Or it could be both. It could be very empowering and keeping you organized, keeping you on task, keeping you focused, keeping things where they need to be. But it also can be very limiting if you take that too far. So really look at those and... And, and do you want to make that change? Do you want to change that behavior? Do you want to change that, that attitude, that belief? Do you want to make those changes? Um, and in doing so, create a better life for yourself. Um, and, and then the next question from that is, do you think it's possible? Well, I believe that it is. And that's what I hear, am here to share with you is, is kind of my journey and the things that I've done that have really helped me see the possibility in that and be able to take those limiting beliefs and turn them into empowering beliefs, which is really what, what bow tie living is all about. And it's that transforming those life's knots. And those life's knots are those limiting beliefs and transforming them into empowering beliefs that actually help us grow, grow as human beings, grow as people. And um, really, <clears throat> excuse me, hang on one second. Like I said, I'm still battling this cold. Um, so, so that takes us to really kind of the big questions. Um, are you, are you open again? Are you open to recognizing what those are? And then once you recognize them, that's not enough. Are you open to changing them and, and making them part of who you are still, but making them more empowering than limiting? Um, and, um, as soon as you can do that and you can answer that question, then you're ready to move on. Um, but then the question becomes, well, how do I do that? What do I do? Um, and, you know, one of the things that I've, that I've really learned over the last couple of years, um, it took me a long time to learn this, was I had to um, be different. Um, because, hi, Lisa. Um, but I had to be different because what I had been doing and what I had known and the thoughts and the beliefs and the actions that I was taking got me to where I was. So all of a sudden now I had to think and behave differently and respond and react and do all those things differently. Well, I came to realize I didn't necessarily know what that was. I didn't know what that looked like. And so um, I've, I've gone through that process and I've learned that. And that's really where I came up with this bow tie living and this acrostic for bow tie. Um, because it really started with how I thought about the things and then I had to be open to change those But I also had to be open not only to wanting to change those but open to learning new ways To do that because I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the resources I didn't have the things that I thought were necessary. I thought I did. I certainly thought I did I thought I could do it on my own um, and part of my struggle and my journey through um you know, getting sober and alcoholism was I spent five and a half years I'm um, trying to get sober on and off and, and it was all on my own power. I was trying to do it myself. I was trying to control it. I was trying to use all the things that I had learned in my life up to that point and um, use those to make the changes. Well, if I was able to do that, I wouldn't have been at that point I was at. Does that make sense? So... It, it's kind of that, it goes back to that old saying everybody loves to, to say about insanity, right? What's the definition, definition of insanity? And that's doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Well, the same thing can be said about change in our lives. We can only change when we learn new ways to make those changes in our lives. Because if you think about, you only have a certain set of tools. You have a certain level of knowledge, understanding, 
commitment, all those things. But if you knew how to do it, you probably would have already done it. Well, that's what Bowtie Living is all about and, and really can um, share with you that process of, of really making those changes. Um, and he, this is probably one of my, my most favorite, favorite question that goes to this, is that ask yourself, are old problems or current problems easier to accept than new solutions? Again, let me repeat that. Are we more comfortable living with our current problems, with our current challenges, with our current belief systems? Are we, are we okay because it's easier than learning how to make those changes? And for a lot of people, that's very, very true. Um, you know, I'm I, in, uh, in sales, and one of the things that we talk a lot about is changing people's behavior because that's really in sales what you do you change you're asking someone to change their behavior you're buying widget x well we want you to buy widget y well why 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 is y better i should have used different letters in that example so you're currently using a widget and we want you to buy b widget well that's really hard to make a change especially if you're really comfortable with the a widget whether you're on an iPhone or an Android, how many of you would switch devices? Not many people. You really look at that, and that, that's a great example in today's world of technology that people get tied to a certain operating system. Are you a Mac or are you a, a um, PC? You know, I mean, they have commercials that fight over that. But changing that behavior is very, very hard. So it's the same thing when we look at this openness to wanting to change what our current beliefs are because although we know what they are we may recognize all the limiting beliefs that we have in our life but you know what until we're ready to accept that they're limiting us and we're really willing to make that change and take the necessary action to make that change we won't do it because it's just so much easier to stay where we're at it is so much easier you know, we joked about the first year coming up, right? And, um, you know, next Wednesday, if the gyms are open, it's probably one of the busiest days of the year at the gym because what does everybody want to do? They want to change their behavior. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym. I make all these New Year's resolutions. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to run a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, a marathon, whatever it might be. I'm going to do all these things. And I forget the exact stats, but it's crazy. Within 30 days, it's something like 70% of people have already given up on their New Year's resolutions. 30 days. And we're talking about changing a belief system that is truly ingrained with inside us. That's going to take some time. It's going to take some work. And, and it takes some tough stuff. But the cool part about it is... When you get out on the other side and you continue to get out on the other side and you continue to grow and you continue to change, those things only get better and better and better and you learn more and more and more tools. And that's what's really exciting about this, but it's that initial hump that you have to get over. Am, am I willing? Am I, I am able, I know you're all able, but are you willing to put the work in? Are you willing to do what's necessary to change that way of thinking, that those belief systems that have been part of you for a very, very long time. In my case, it was for decades, literally decades. It's a long time to try to change beliefs. And I've shared a little bit about you know the, my, my thoughts about worthiness or unworthiness and being unworthy. I mean, I, I look back and that was, that was a belief system that I had from being a little kid, I mean, a, little, a small child having that feeling of being unworthy. And I carried that for a very long time, again, decades. So just to, that's why I still struggle with it. Because it's even though I go through this process and I learn and I've got new tools and I've got new ways of dealing with this and I've gone through this process, is you know what, I still have those thoughts come into play. They still come in. And there are times if, if I am at a, at a lower point in the day or maybe something happened and I'm not cheerful and happy and rah, 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 um, you know, those things can come in pretty quickly. Or maybe I have, maybe I have a week that hasn't gone great. And all of a sudden now that those, those thoughts and those beliefs start coming back. Um, 
so I'm not going to tell you it's easy. Um, it takes it takes constant work. It takes continuing to pursue this journey. Uh, but that's what I love about it because it's it's a journey. Um, it's not a destination that I'm going to get to. Um, the day that I get to that destination is the day that I probably have death. I'm dead. So um, I, uh, I I believe that you have to be exceptionally open to wanting to change and open to doing the work that's necessary um, to really facilitate what that change looks like. Um, let me look at my notes here real quick. Oh, I, I had another great example that I wanted to share. Um, kind of how we, we look at this, and it's, it's a perfect example when you look at the gym um, and New Year's resolutions, or any New Year's resolutions, whatever it might be, but think of it almost like a garden. Um, so we have this big, beautiful garden, and that's kind of our life, but in our garden, we always have to take care of our garden, and weeds will pop up. Um, I don't care what you do, you're going to get weeds in your garden. And um, so many times, I know I did this for a really, really long time, and I still can do it, um, but instead, uh, I, I would go through and I would cut the weeds. Just cut them, right? You get dandelions in your lawn, what do you do? You mow them, right? Oh, I don't have the yellow tops anymore, so they're not there. Well, we all know that's not true. We all know that there's still dandelions there. And so really, when you just cut anything like that, that's a short-term remedy to something that is, is inside of you. And really what you have to do is you have to dig deep and pull that pull that dandelion, that weed out by the root so that it doesn't have the ability to grow back. But even with that said, I mean, there's still opportunities for other um, other things to come in and, and weeds and, and other things that are um, not necessary and that you don't want to come into your garden. And you've got to continually work on that garden. And our lives are kind of the same thing. Um, so we all, a lot of people, I shouldn't say we all, a lot of people are always looking for that quick fix. What is that one thing that I can do? What, what's that one pill I can take and lose 10 pounds? What is that one thing that I can do today that I'm gonna have um, a lifetime of benefit from? And that's because we're in this instant gratification society and, and we wanna have those things now, we wanna get better now, we wanna get healed now, we wanna have the perfect life now. Um, well, if, that was, if it was that easy, would it really be the perfect life? And, and I don't know that it was because, you know, it's one of those things where we have we have balance in our world, right? We have good. The only way we can have good is to have bad. Otherwise, we don't know what they look like. Um, the only way we can have peace and joy is to have struggle. And, and because otherwise, we wouldn't know what they were. So the same thing with our beliefs. We just have to change the way that we look at those, the way that we think about those. Um, so many of you are probably, you know, thinking, well, well, okay, this is great, Well, but what do I have to be open to? You told me that I don't have the tools. I, I don't have what's necessary. Well, well what I found was um, there, is, there is God. And, and God is the one thing that, although I, I have, I've believed in God since I was a small child, um, I never really had a, a true personal relationship with him um, until the last few years. And, and, and the thing that I found was that I tried everything that I knew how to get that healing, to get that, that release and that change that I was looking for and to get those, that, the life that I was looking for and how to find joy in the struggle, how to transform life's knots into a beautiful bow tie life. And what I found was um, it really came in my personal relationship, not just a belief, but a true personal relationship with God. And, and that has taken time, too. Um, I continue to work on it each and every day. But what I found is when I surrendered all of these negative, limiting beliefs to him, I was able then to hear him, and he was able to help me um, change those beliefs. Because I certainly, I tried. I tried for a long, long time to do it on my own. And I know a lot of people do. You know what? It's all willpower. It's willpower, willpower, willpower. And my name's Will, right? Um, you think I'd have all the willpower in the world, but I got to tell you, I don't. And I didn't. And until I was able to surrender that is when I, this is, I love this. When I was able to surrender is when I gained freedom. And when I say surrender, it's not giving up at all. I still have to take a lot of action every day, throughout every day. 
But when I was able to surrender and ask him to come in and lead me instead of me trying to control everything is when I started to really feel that healing and see that healing. And he still does it almost daily where I see him, his hand in things that I'm trying to do. And it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And I don't know what your spiritual relationship is with God or where you're at in your spiritual place. And I'm not here to tell you you have to do this. What I'm telling you is that my story is, is that when I surrendered, truly surrendered myself and these beliefs and these negative beliefs to God, I was able to get healing and I was able to grow. And, and still to this day, I grow. And, and I have someone and something way bigger than I am, way, way bigger, because I, um, I'm a human being. I am on this earth just like you as, as a fellow human being. And um, since the beginning of time, we are, we are sinners and we make mistakes and we, are, we tend to want to do things for ourselves. Um, and until I was able to really understand that and give up that control, um, is when I was able to really start start gaining that healing. And I, I heard this quote one day that, that God's grace um, is, well, there's a lot of different definitions, but one of the things um, that I really realized about it was, and I'm going to read this, I can't do it, which is change. I can't make those changes. I can't. But God can through me. And that's, that's what's amazing is, is I still have to do it and get to do it. Not have to. That's the wrong word. I still get to do those things. I still get to take that action. I still get to um, be a father, be a husband, be, be all these things. Um, but I don't have to do it alone. I now get to do have God work through me and do those things and guide my path. And guide me on the way. And, and I'm here to tell you, I am so, so not perfect at it. I have so much growth that I still have to go through. Um, and I'll never get there. And I don't pretend to. But but I do know that when I do surrender, when I do, you know, kind of lift my hands up and open them to him, take them off that steering wheel, that those things that I used to feel about myself, I don't know that I've shared this yet, but two and a half years ago was my, my true emotional bottom about two and a half years ago. And it happened between February 28th of 2017 and March 5th of 2017. And I was at the lowest, lowest point of, of my entire life. And, um, I was truly in a pit of despair, um, and was not in a good place. And, and I had negative thought after negative thought after negative thought. And what I, what I finally was able to realize in, in this recovery journey is that when I surrendered all of that, I can tell you that those thoughts don't come to me anymore. That unworthiness that I felt during that five or six day window that was the worst I've ever felt in my entire life, I've never had to feel that again, ever. And that had nothing to do with anything that I did, nothing. Because I tried everything. I tried personal development. I tried counseling. I tried antidepressants. I tried all kinds of things. I'm not saying don't do those things. What I'm saying was that that didn't work for me. As soon as I was able to surrender, um, I was able to get that freedom and let go of those negative limiting beliefs. Like I said, they still creep in once in a while, here or there. Um, and the thing that really changed with me there is... You know, the things that I'm sharing with you right now seem um, pretty easy and simple, and they are at an intellectual level. Um, if you think about that, yeah, I can sit down and I can write a list, right? I can put a list of all these things. Um, but that's all intellectual. Until I really sit down and bring that into my heart, they're just going to sit up in here. And I need to make um, these communicate to each other and really um, live from here and not from here. Because when I live from here, um, it's not a great place. Um, but when I live from here, um, for myself and for others, um, that I know is what comes from God. Um, because it, it all can be very, very um, easy just to go through the motions. Um, I had a point in my journey where I got four months of sobriety and I call it checkbox sobriety because that's all I was doing. I was doing everything um, from an intellectual level. Um, not really from a true emotional and spiritual level 
and a connection with with God. And so, um, again, I, I'm not here to tell you um, anything but my story. Um, you know, that's a path that um, you you get to walk. Um, it's a journey that you get to take. But I but I can share my my experience with that is that when I was able to truly live from here man i gotta tell you life just got so much better and i can i can see things differently i can experience things differently i can respond and react differently i can do i can just be a different person because it's not me trying to run the show anymore um i still try once in a while i try well not even once in a while i still try to take control um but i also remind myself because of the things that i've learned um that i don't have to so um, hey, Jerry, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, uh, I love it. And um, thanks for jumping on and uh, joining me. So so that I'm going to end with that tonight. I uh, am just, uh, again, humble to be able to share this with you and, and give you some ideas and, and some things that you can think about, um, you know, as far as um, your own journey, whatever that might be. Um, if you ever want to talk about that journey, looks like, please DM me, PM me again, whatever they do on Facebook. I don't even know. Uh, but message me. There we go. Just message me. I'm glad to talk with you and jump on the phone. Um, I'm a geek, geek at heart. So if you want to zoom, we can zoom, um, on the computer as well, which is always kind of fun. Um, but uh, I'm happy to, to talk to you about what's going on in your journey. Um, answer any questions that you have about mine and, and tomorrow we move on to W um, in bow tie living. So the W is witness. And I'm sure everybody's t kind of wondering, what in the world is witness all about? Well, you're going to have to join me tomorrow to figure out what witness really is. Um, it's an incredible, incredible part of bow tie living. And it's probably um, one of the more important pieces um, of this journey is um, to go through the, the W portion of Bowtie and Bowtie Living. Um, so I'm excited um, uh, to share that with you. Tomorrow will probably be about the same time as what I'm thinking, um, between 7 and 8. Uh, that's what I'm going to try to shoot for over the next few days, so as we go through this acrostic. Um, but in the meantime, uh, you guys know I love you, um, and please feel free to reach out. And um, if you want to chat, I'm, I'm happy to chat. Um, and also invite your friends. If you know anybody that you think would uh, enjoy this, um, you know, invite them to connect with me on Facebook. And um, I'd be glad to accept the connection and um, share this with them and, and share the video as much as you would like. Um, so that's it for tonight. Thank you all again for joining me. Um, this is Will I Am, the Bowtie Sober Guy. Until I see you tomorrow, peace out.